Bert, I got some observations. Let's First, go. Through the NFL. Oh, wait, wait, are you separating that? Okay, so you're separating NFL I am separating. Christmas. I'm right, separating cool, cool, cool. NFL from Christmas. And, of course, I don't have it drawn up. And, of course, I'm totally unprepared because I put it in a separate note file. But my first one, I, I, I know one of them. I don't mm-hmm. can't remember what number it is. But number five, Bert, Drew Locke, winner. Oh. Winner. Straight winner. His, his performance against the Eagles, you beat the best team in the NFC. Yeah. Well, second best team in the second NFC. Best. One of the top teams. Mm-hmm. And you go out there. There's um, some controversy with his hand clapping, and people are saying that it's baby powder to help him grip the ball. But I don't know if these idiots in Philly who are crying about the loss uh, have noticed. It was fucking raining outside. So yeah. I don't know if baby powder was going to fucking mist up in the air at, when he clapped his hands. Like, But yeah, is that illegal, though, to use baby powder? No, anyway? it's not. Yeah. It's not. So, which is which is hilarious that they even brought it up, but mm-hmm. that's what they did. Uh, that was number three. So technically, now that's number five. So number four, the original number four, Baker Mayfield and Matt Stafford, quietly having great seasons, Bert. Yeah. Let me. Hey, resurgence tour, revenge tour. Cleveland sitting there wondering what could have been mm-hmm. if they would have just stuck with Baker, let him heal from his injury. And listen, sometimes you just have to separate to grow. And I, maybe that was the situation in Cleveland. And amicable divorces happen sometimes, right? Divorces are usually a nasty thing. But in the case for Detroit and L.A., it worked out for everybody. And so, you know, but Matt Stafford kind of, you know, I know he got the Super Bowl ring, but people weren't really giving him the credit for it. He's like, he was like the, the first Brock Purdy where he wasn't getting the credit that he deserved because he was on a boss team. Yeah. And, uh you know, for the Super Bowl ring, especially for me, you know, but Stafford keeps it up, man. He threw a nasty, like, off the leg, back leg, no look pass in overtime to Cooper Cup, which was amazing to win the game. Yeah, uh, this isn't new. Get- I mean, people have been dogging Stafford ever since he was in Detroit, too, saying the only reason he was good is because he had Megatron, you know, like he which he, was he, largely which was largely true. To, there's a to, good. Yeah. I mean, but, he had he had three winning seasons in twelve years. He made the th- playoffs three times in twelve. So it's not all like, oh no, Matt Stafford didn't have nobody. He had mad people. So uh, that's the Cam Newton people are like on Cam Newton, like oh well, he, he had trash. He had Steve Smith, DJ Moore. <laughs> he had Christian McCaffrey, Jonathan Stewart, D'Angelo Williams. He had I know Kelvin Benjamin's a name you laugh at now for the but for those two or three seasons he was there, he was nasty. Good. And so he, you know, Cam Newton had help. People need to stop acting like he didn't have help. But uh, and Baker Mayfield uh, slept on, like I said, by the Browns. Yeah. And now look at him, killing it. Passed hey, Bert, on you know? by Carolina, and now he's yeah, yep. he's yeah. Quick stops in Carolina, quick stops in uh, in L.A. to, to yep. cover for Stafford. And here we are, Baker Mayfield with Tampa Bay NFC South champs of at their or leaders at this point. Twenty four so touchdowns to eight interceptions. Um, Bert, I don't know if you know this. There's only two players, two quarterbacks, to have perfect quarterback ratings in Lambeau Field. One of them's Aaron Rodgers, and the other, Baker Mayfield. That's so, awesome. Don't know if you, anybody's had that on uh, their bingo card. Uh, number number three, Bert. Brock Purdy talking like a 10-year vet, <laughs> even though he's a one-year vet. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I love seeing him give credit to Christian McCaffrey. I don't know if it's self-awareness. I think a lot of – I think he knows – maybe he doesn't believe it, uh, but he is saying the right thing. Christian McCaffrey's having an excellent season. Unfortunately, as we know, the MVP is a quarterback award. Yeah. And um, I don't think Brock Purdy is the MVP simply because when I think of MVP, I think as a defensive coach or a player, who am I game planning for? When you look at the Niners, Brock Purdy isn't the guy you're game planning for. You're game planning for CMC, and you're then you're probably game planning for Debo, and then maybe Brock Purdy, right? So, uh, but when you look at like to me, Lamar Jackson's probably the MVP because not only is he everything to the Ravens, they also are winning. Now, if Josh Allen can somehow make the playoffs, I, I would think because just statistically, Josh Allen has just been a monster this year. Yeah. The problem for him is they started off bad, and then it was like wishy washy. Then they had a losing season, and technically, as of today, they're not even in the playoffs. So I can't say he's the MVP. But if they somehow end up eleven and six, Bert, and they make the playoffs, you're damn right. I pick Josh Allen as the MVP. Uh, and <clears throat> Brock, I mean, to Brock Purdy's credit, though, and look, if if you had to go MVP for a quarterback, if you were looking strictly at numbers, I mean, they are still leaning towards Tua. 
it's tough to ignore that. Um, but, but I feel I see your, the I see your point argument, on, right. I the see your point on Jackson. The same nice. as Brock. But, yeah, I, I'll give you that. And they yeah. are mostly there. I mean, they're definitely not mobile quarterbacks by right. any means. Like, like a Lamar would be a more well-rounded player all around. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, for two of those, it's like you, when you're Miami, you game plan for Tyreek, right? You're not oh, yeah. like when, with the bills. It's Hey, Josh Allen, you know, when it's, so I have to look at that first and then I look at, yes, your team does have to win. And then, then I got to look at your stats. And then, so Brock Purdy, now to his credit, his stats actually do back up his MVP candidacy. Yeah. And, but again, a lot of that is, um, a lot of that is just yak yards and, and dinks and dunks. And yeah, I mean, his percentages on deep throws will tell you, Hey, yeah, he throws deep too. But I mean, if you watch the games, they, they rely heavily on a lot of that. Hey, throw it 10 yards. And CMC is going to take it for 60. Uh, number two, Bert. Uh, Trevor Lawrence. Kind of a bum. It just, it's a, <laughs> isn't the Jacksonville Danny, curse, though? I mean, is it just? It is. Yeah. It is. It is the Jacksonville curse. Uh, Bert, Steve Zuccheri sent me this. Uh, he's, a, he's a fellow, fellow uh, Giants fan like yourself. Mm-hmm. Sent me a stat. QB1, 48 starts, 20 and 28 record. 85.1 QBR, 12,000 passing yards, 55 touchdowns to 35 interceptions. QB2, 48 starts, 19 and 29 record, 85.4 QBR, also with about 12,000 passing yards, 55 touchdowns to 33 interceptions. That last one is Daniel Jones, and the first one is Trevor Lawrence. Wow. So. Uh, but if you listen to the media, you'd think Trevor Lawrence was the second coming. I know. The prince who was promised. And so uh, that just shows you that the media backs who they want to back and they like who they want to like. But, of course. Uh, when I when I saw that, I immediately thought, oh, no, Trevor Lawrence is a bum. We just gave yeah. him a lot of credit because yeah. the Jacksonville Jaguars at the time earlier in the season were winning and the Giants weren't. So, And I do feel like Danny Dimes got his – I mean, he, people call him Danny Dimes. So there was moments for him to shine. And the Giants were good to, by all accounts, last year. So I think Daniel Jones got his. I think he got his just due. I mean, he was rewarded with a big contract. So yeah, I think I think at the time people were giving Danny Dimes his. uh, his You wonder what it is with 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 the Giants is we we have not since Jesus I couldn't even even when Eli Manning was our quarterback there was never a period of time we felt confident every Sunday our quarterback was going to show up and show up correctly. Like we don't have we don't have that like even like in a Josh Allen Patrick Mahomes uh, Aaron Rodgers or even Brock Purdy now era you know he's at least going to do his job and we have not had that in a very long time. Number one, Bert. Death, taxes, and the Cowboys falling apart <laughs> just in time for the playoffs. Oh, you know, one graphic I absolutely love. We see it on Twitter, too, is anytime after the Cowboys lose, they always say, just checking to see if you're still them boys. And it's always, yeah, oh, it's, it's always funny in there. It never gets old. Never. gets old. Bert, you can set your clock to it. I mean, back in week one, what did I say? I don't care if the Cowboys go 17 and 0. Yeah, it don't matter. Let it will happen. It will. The 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 Berlin Wall. And the Cowboys have one thing in common. They both collapse they both. every time. Okay? It's – the Bills are closer to overtaking the Dolphins than the Cowboys are to overtaking the Eagles, which is hilarious because yeah. the Cowboys are 10 and whatever. And so – and everybody fell for it. Everybody fell for it. The Bills are somehow not a contender and the Cowboys are. Well, guess what? It don't matter. The Cowboys and contender don't belong in the same sense. It just don't. <laughs> Cowboys and, and contender do not belong in the same sentence, just like pediatric gynecologists don't. <laughs> Let Yo, me tell you, it's just Jesus. It's that is that is the parallel we are drawing here. The Cowboys will never, and I repeat, ever 